and welcome to Books Without Barcodes, the series where I review vintage books published before April of 1978 when UPC barcodes were required on all publications available to the public. So the book I will be reviewing today is Leah Brackett, The Big Jump. This is an ace paperback copy. Uh, this story originally was published in Space Stories in the magazine in 1953. This is actually not a true first edition. Uh, the true first edition paperback uh, was actually, this, The Big Jump was published alongside another novel as like a double and also a, an ace paperback and that preceded this one. But as per usual, before I go into the review of The Big Jump, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background information about Leah Brackett. Leah Brackett was originally born in 1915 and was a very active writer, not only as a novelist, but also as a screenwriter from her beginning in the 1940s until her passing in 1978. Uh, as I said, she's published quite a few stories. Uh, but also as a screenwriter and she is one of the main screenwriters for The Big Sleep and also initially did the first draft for The Empire Strikes Back. So I thought that was really really cool. Uh, Leah Brackett is also considered the queen of space opera and you know after reading The Big Jump I am very excited after hearing that she was considered the queen of the space opera to read more from her. So when I originally had purchased this book, I was intrigued, of course, by the cover because the cover is really cool. But this blurb down here, uh, one man had come back, but he was neither, neither dead nor alive. That made me feel like in addition to the cover, this would be like kind of Mary, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. That is not this at all. <laughs> now this is a very tight novel and the writing is also very tight. Uh, this book only has a few outdated terms. For example, um, there's reference to a family, which I will talk about in a little bit, uh, of having ancestry from the Sioux Indians, when instead they would be Lakota indigenous people. That's about the only thing that's really outdated, maybe a couple of slang terms, but overall the writing in itself feels extremely contemporary. So the book opens up with the main character, Arch Common. That's what I'm calling him. This is how you spell his name. You can mentally pronounce it however you want. I called him Common because it made me laugh. But Arch Common is trying to find what happens to his friend, Paul Rogers, who was one of five men who originally went off on the big jump, which is what they are terming humanity going beyond our initial nine planet solar system. Again, this was published in 1953. So Pluto was still considered a planet then. <laughs> so that's why I said nine planet solar system. Uh, so he was one of five and the lone survivor of that initial five man trip has returned. And you, the book opens up to Arch trying to gain access to the one returning member of that space expedition. So the lone survivor is sequestered on a base and Common gains access uh, via, you know, gangstery subterfuge ways and is able to gain access to who we find out is Ballantyne. Ballantyne is the only one to um, return from the big jump and actually he is the main reason that they were able to make the big jump to begin with. Uh, the Ballantine drive is faster than light travel, which, you know, normal concept that people, even modern people say we have to be able to do faster than light travel in order to be able to explore beyond our own solar system. It's kind of like a reoccurring theme here. And when Common finds him after gaining access to the base, he tries to question him to figure out what happened to his friend Paul Rogers that went on the trip with them. And during the interrogation, Valentine passes quite uh, disturbingly. And so Arch, you know, gets some information from him about, uh, about what happened during the expedition and why he was the only one that came back. And he's able to escape the base and he ends up getting tailed because the expedition is funded by a giant corporation. In fact, all space travel is funded by giant corporations, which again made it feel very contemporary considering the last couple years, uh, Bezos 
Jeff Bezos and uh, Elon Musk, you know, Bezos from Amazon and Musk from Tesla, did their own little space race. So billionaires doing space race and trying to fund space exploration. Very contemporary. But the ones, the, the big corporation that won out in this book it, are the Cochrans. And the Cochrans are the ones that funded Ballantine's expedition, the big jump, and funded the drive. And the ones trying to keep everything hush-hush before they make a second jump trying to find what Ballantine had discovered out there in um, the Bernard Star system. And that's the, the system they've gone to go explore. And it made me had to refresh my knowledge of the periodic table because they're talking about um, tran transerne uh, elements in this book. And those are the elements that we know as being man-made, having have man uh, make elements beyond the original naturally occurring ones here on Earth. So I had to do a little bit of uh, <laughs> refresh there for the periodic table, which I found very nice. And uh, lots of hijinks ensue, including uh, Common getting tailed after leaving after leaving Valentine's body at the base, uh, having to fight his way out of his tail, and also going and meeting up with one of the Cochrans, a uh, lovely, a uh, voluptuous lady, who becomes his. Uh, passing of time love interest and she's again used very much as a plot device but she has an interesting character so I will excuse that uh it, it was it was a good plot device it fit very well with the story it felt very well with like the Cochran's like jockeying for position and also you know if you have a big corporation with a big family um you know with the vying of attention and affection within the family for power uh, and position within the family and the family business. Uh, I thought it was very interesting that the Cochrans uh, were hailed from the Lakota people, the indigenous people of Lakota, although in this book, again, they called them uh, Indians and the Sioux, which is outdated. But I thought that was really nice. Uh, what, ends up, what ends up happening is that the Cochrans um, decide to fund another expedition to find the Transerne, and I can't really give away what happens. Uh, I can't really go beyond that they do end up doing another expedition and Common goes with them again to try to find what happened to Paul Rogers uh, during the big jump. The writing is feels very contemporary other than the two outdated terms that I mentioned. The story is very tight, like it has really great pacing, it moves very quickly, but you don't feel like important details are being uh, left behind in order to make the story move quickly. The story ends, this, the ending for the story felt very real and it made me feel a little sad for Common, but it, it felt very real and the whole expedition when they go out in space, very plausible, very cool. I, I really enjoyed this book. It's one of the few paperback books because I enjoyed it so much that I'm actually keeping this. I'm sorry I'm not passing it on to any of you. I am actually going to keep this book. This makes me really excited to read more from Leah Brackett because the, the prose in this was just so good. Like it wasn't you know, super thought provoking. It wasn't something that's going to make you think about it, you know, for, <sighs> it's just a really good story. Like this is something like if you wanted to have, you know, a, just a nice little sci-fi story to take with you on a plane or on the bus, or if you're laying out on the beach, I don't know how much of that y'all do, but, uh, this is just a really solid, tight, good piece of science fiction of genre science fiction and I enjoyed it. Uh, I would recommend that you try to find your own copy of The Big Jump and read it for yourself. It was good and I'm glad I got to read it and I look forward to reading more from her. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys uh, next Monday for another review. Bye!
Look at you.